Here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I have a story in front of me that I have read over the years many times. It was written in 1937 by a man <clears throat> that lived in Trenton, New Jersey. His name was Hogland. And he wrote it in 1937. And this is a true story. And I'm going to read... I've got to read at least 11 pages. I'm going to try to do that in a 30-minute setting. And then maybe I'll do another 30-minute setting and finish the book. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He made and created every living creature upon the earth. His crowning act of creation was man whom he made in his image and likeness. God knew all things in advance. He knew the end from the beginning. He knew that man would sin and become separated from him. Well, why did God create man? God created a man to choose. God wanted to a chosen people in his heavenly home to love and to live with him. He wanted them to know him as father. Love him with their heart, soul, and mind, and strength. Men and women... Men and women who want children to love and to be loved in return. To make a happy home, I like God in this respect. A happy home, God made man to have a happy home. When he made Adam and Eve, he saw Adam needed a helpmate, and he wanted them to replenish the earth. He wanted them to have a happy home and to work the earth. It is possible for fallen man to get back to God. God's plan to save the lost race is plainly set forth in the Scripture. And by the way, the only place you will find it is in the Scripture, in the Bible. The Bible is the inspired Word of God is calling all, calling all, who will hear. And by the way, you can hear today by radio, television, all kinds of means God is putting out the Word. Just think, back in Jesus' day, there were just 12 men, 11 men to go out at first and uh, <clears throat> tell the gospel. And now it's on, on the airways every day. The Bible is the inspired word of God and is calling all who hear it to come back to God, the Father. Jesus Christ and his apostles taught the, the uh, true way to eternal life. Every man must have two births. One, he's born of blood and water from his mother's womb. The second, he is born into heaven by saying, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. That's the second birth. Without the first, he cannot feel or know anything about life. Folks, on material things, without uh, last, he cannot be free. Well, the material things of this world will not set a man free. That's not what will set a man free. It takes more than material things of this world to set a man free from the curse of sin so as to enjoy the gift of eternal life here and glory hereafter. You remember Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus by night to know more about this new teacher whom he believed came from God because of the miracles that he had performed. Now, uh, Nicodemus was going totally by sight. And he saw these miracles. But he said, this guy has got to be something. So he comes to him. Jesus immediately saw the need of his soul and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3.3 3. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born again when he's old? Jesus answered him, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That means he's got to be born the first time from his mother's womb in the water and the blood and then of the Spirit of God. The water our Lord mentioned connected with the Spirit is not baptism water, it is a symbol figure of the Word of God. Well, the Word of God first. That is the water of life too. And James showed that it is the Word of God out of which we receive our new birth. 
Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again, Jesus said unto Nicodemus. Well, like Nicodemus, you unsaved ones ask what must we do? How do we go about being born again? Listen, here's the answer of it. Jesus, for God so loved the world. And John 3 and 16, he gave his only begotten son, his one son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But you say you have heard the gospel preached for years, and you do believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but you do not have the assurance of sins forgiven. You hope that you are saved, but are uncertain about it. To believe that Jesus, I asked uh, uh, two or three people this during last week. I've asked two or three people. Uh, <clears throat> if you died right now, would you go to heaven? And some say, oh yeah, I would. I said, well, tell me about that. And, and, and I didn't get a true plan of salvation, a clear plan. I, I met people doing good, being good. I asked one boy, he said, well, I asked Jesus to save me. And I said, well, how's things working now? He said, well, I'm being good. I'm doing what I can and this and that. That's not it. It's not what you're doing. It's what you're believing. And it will cause you to do different than just trying to be good. All right. You've got to believe in the Savior, uh, the world, but not your personal Savior is not sufficient. Your personal saying, excuse me, is not sufficient. Beloved, Jesus died for you. Bore your sins in his own body on Calvary's cross. His blood was shed for you. Accept him now. Give yourself wholly to him. Give yourself wholly to him. He will accept you and give you a precious gift of eternal life. It is the same for all. If you are the best man that ever walked on the streets, or if this is in the city, you will never get on into heaven without the blood of Jesus. You could give all your money away. You could do all of the works you can do. You can do anything you want. You can be the best human being on earth. You'll die and go to hell. That's not going to get you to heaven. Uh, the religion, you can go. You can be a religious man. I talked today, a man said, but, but Pete, you don't know, I'm a Catholic. I said, you and I believe the same thing. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, that's right. I said, the difference is, Jesus is my priest. I asked him to come into my heart. Now I have my priest in my heart. You have to go to a man that you call a priest. He can't forgive you of your sins. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can forgive of sins. Not that priest. And so uh, we get our sins forgiven that way. Must all be saved the same way. Some professors, some religious believers, some putting away things some uh, sinful habits, some living good morally, some contributing to good works, some doing the necessary steps to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Can't, none of those uh, will work. You've got to do this way. Salvation is by law, then Christ died in vain. If it was a law that you could do good, then Christ died in vain. So you can't do good. So <clears throat> the law was given to the purpose to teach a lesson, but was never given to save a soul. We had nothing to do with our natural birth. We were created by God's word, born according to his plan to replenish the earth with people. Uh, because of the fall of the first parents, all were born with sinful natures, and in no way are we able to change our sinful condition. The necessity of the new birth grows out of the incapacity of the natural man to enter the kingdom of God. However gifted, however moral, however he refrains, however his ability is, if he's blind spiritually, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. For God can neither God, for he can neither obey, understand, nor please God. You can't, you can't come to God except through Jesus Christ. God said there's only one name in heaven where you can come to me, and that's through my Son, Jesus Christ. You try to come to God any other way, you will not make it. You will not make it. Try anything you want to try. 
You'll not make it without the name of Jesus Christ. When we confess our sins and believe in His Son, the Spirit births us in earnest prayer and Jesus Christ gives us power to overcome the evils that beset us and the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. There is nothing under the sun that could convince me that I'm not a child of God. Nothing could convince me that I'm not a child of God. I lived as a child of a devil for 30 years. Man, don't you think I know what alcohol and, and cussing and swearing and doing all of the evil that I did? There was nothing I didn't do under the sun, hardly. I don't know if there was a, a more evil man than I was on this earth. <coughs> Instantly, November 5th, 1972, 3 o'clock in the morning, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. I said, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. I haven't swore a cuss word or took a drink from that day to this. And I have worked many, 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 many things out of my life other than that. <coughs> and so God changed me spiritual. I had a spiritual birth in earnest prayer to Jesus. His name gives the power to overcome the evil that besets us and bears the witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Beloved, the devil tempts men to believe in a substitute. In this age, he's trying to convince them that by living a good life, they can go to heaven. I'm telling you what, you ain't going to make it. You just ain't. You are not going to make it. That's all there is to it. And so, living a good life won't do it. That by living a good life, Satan is a liar. Do not deceive, be deceived by him. No one can get to the heavenly home but those who have been redeemed. The word redeemed means you are bought with a price and you were redeemed. That price was Jesus hanging on the cross. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The regeneration of the thief on the cross. This is beautiful. He has two thieves hanging on crosses beside Jesus. One of them rails on Jesus and says, Hey, if you are God in the flesh, you say who you are. Let's get down off these crosses. You just get us all down off these crosses. And the other one says over there, I'm not worthy. Jesus, I'm not worthy. I am a thief. I did what they said I did. And I repent. And Jesus said, This day thou wilt be with me in paradise. Wow. You know what? Jesus was going to paradise that evening. He was going to go to paradise. And he carried that guy with him. How about that? The guy off the cross. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to be dipped or be damned. Uh, this thing of you have to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin is not true. Being baptized is a very good thing and it's a, a thing necessary and it's necessary for you to be able to follow God like you ought to follow God to step up in front of a group of people and say I'm willing to be buried with him in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. I'm willing to stand there. Jesus said if you'll be ashamed of me now on earth I'll be ashamed of you to my father. So uh, we need not to be ashamed. But it's not what seals us into the day of redemption. What seals us is the conviction of saying, I am a sinner. Forgive me of that sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. Now you're saved. That thief on the cross didn't go to baptism. And millions of others who have died on the deathbed saying, Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And going on to heaven uh, didn't get that way either. Regeneration of the thief on the cross proved he was not saved by obeying the law. He was a criminal, crucified for his crime. Undoubtedly, he was a Jew and knew the Jewish belief in the coming of the Messiah. So far as he had rejected him, 
and at the last hour he was convinced that he was the Son of God who was uh, sacrificing his life to save sinners. He was convicted and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Man, man, what a beautiful picture. What a thrill and joy must have filled the heart of that man. And that son, boy, such a gracious promise from a suffering Savior. Millions of people are rejoicing in Christ. Precious promise. If we will believe in Him, He will give us the spiritual birth and a home with Himself in the Father's house. Wow! This poor criminal was saved not by living a good life. No time for that. But by believing in Jesus Christ, the Beloved. Why trust in the substitute instead of God's free gift? Why trust in religion? Why trust in the fact that I, I've had people tell me, do you know that I've never met, I ain't missed Sunday school in 50 years, not one time. Well, good. But that ain't going to get you into heaven. Well, I've done this and I've done that. I heard a man one day, I was at a funeral. And the man, the preacher got up there and he said, surely Mr. So-and-so went to heaven. He mowed this grass down here for 50 years and never complained about nothing. He mowed the grass at this church for 50 years. Surely he went to heaven. I got news for you. He could have mowed grass for a thousand years and not entered into heaven. Mowing grass ain't going to get you to heaven. Good works is not going to get you to heaven. It's going to take repentance. What must Israel do? They must confess their sins to God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ whom they had crucified. The very people that crucified him, Israel, Israelites, the Jewish people, all they got to do is the same thing we got to do. And they'll be saved. Do you know that, that Barabbas, the one they freed and took Jesus instead, had Barabbas been hanging beside Jesus, Jesus would have said, if Barabbas asked him, he would have said, you're forgiven. This day you'll be with me in paradise. He would have said, the very guard that stuck the spear in his side, had he said to Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner, he would have gone to heaven. There was a guard at that crucifixion, if you'll read the scripture, that says, surely this was the Son of God. I believe that guard got saved that day. Surely he recognized this was the Son of God. Wow. <clears throat> and that's what we need to do. Recognize Jesus. Remember Peter's sermon? The theme of it? The day of Pentecost when several thousand were saved? Where Jesus, the Messiah, uh, no message could have been more unwelcome to the Jews who had rejected the Masonic claims? Peter therefore does not announce his theme until he has covered every possible objection. <laughs> he covers all the things first, out of the law and out of the book. He covers all these things. And, and then he comes up with this. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and sent unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. All the other apostles were there too. Hey, I like that. Do you know what I like about that? Peter was speaking. They were praying. Peter had some backup. He had some spiritual backup. He was preaching. They were praying. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call then they gladly received his word 
were baptized the same day and were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And that's in Acts something. Now you can take that to, to uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The same day, 3,000 of them had the Holy Spirit come on them that day. They didn't all run down to the river and get dunked in the water. They all were baptized by the Holy Spirit that day. This picture of the early church, so attractive, so beautiful, so ideal, that the natural man thinks it is overdrawn. Not literally true, but it was. It has been repeated over and over again. Yes, the picture of the marvelous 3,000 uh, resentful, rebellious Jews Change, born again in one day, and going to school under the teaching of the apostle who had been instructed by Christ himself how to preach the gospel, the atoning proof of the resurrection and ascension of our Lord, and the boldness of the apostle who was filled with the Holy Spirit and dared to declare the whole truth with sufficient evidence to prove that he was the Christ the promised Messiah that was to come to save his people from their sins. You can read Acts 2.42. See how this new, these new converts commenced in working for the kingdom of God. They were now assured of salvation by faith and believing in Jesus Christ. You see the end right there? It says they were assured by faith and believing in Jesus Christ. They were baptized into the kingdom of heaven by the Holy Spirit. That was a different baptism. John talked about that baptism. He said, I baptize with water, but there's a one among you who will baptize with the Spirit. And this is what took place here. They were all baptized into the kingdom of God by the Spirit of God. Now, a natural man can't do that. But you know one thing that's really interesting about this story? This Peter, this Peter that had denied Christ, <laughs> they said, I don't even know the man. And this is the guy here preaching. Hey, before you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot witness for Jesus Christ. See, Peter hadn't had the filling when he was warming by the fire. He hadn't had the filling before the cock crowed. He hadn't had the filling until he got, Jesus went to the cross and Peter got filled with the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus said, I go now, but I send you one greater than I, which is the comforter, which will come into you and comfort you and give you the ability to teach and say what I've taught you. It is impossible to be saved by the working for God, by working for God. It is shameful to be saved and not work for God. It is a, all finished for you and me. The everlasting covenant between the Father and the Son. But we must agree with it. We must agree with the Word and its teaching or we cannot enjoy the results. How are you going to agree with the Word if you don't read it? How are you going to agree? Tell me this, Christian, saved person. If you do not read your Bible on a daily basis, if you have not read the Bible through, if you have not commissioned yourself, you say, well, I bought one of them Bibles that could read easy. Throw it away. Throw it away. Get you a King James Version Bible and ask God to show you what you're reading. And it will go into your heart, into your soul, and into your life. You take that modern good news for modern man, that living Bible, throw it in a trash can. Get you a KJV, King James Version, and ask God to show it to you. Listen, I had 60 children, 50, 60 children in children's church for several years. I had children's church. I could take five, six, seven-year-old kids, got saved. They could read me a verse in the Bible, King James Version, and tell me what it said, the essence of it, spiritually. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about little children. And you say, I'm grown and I can't understand it. If you can't understand it, you aren't saved. You get saved and you'll be able to understand it. You ask Jesus to come in your heart, save your soul, and forgive you of your sin. You'll be able to understand what's in that book. 
I would suggest you start reading over in the book of John first. I wouldn't recommend you start reading in Revelation so over in uh, where, where God created the heaven and the earth, even though that's good. But you need to read something spiritual first. You need to read some of the red writing in your New Testament where Jesus was speaking. It is impossible to be saved by working for God. It is shameful to be saved and not work for God. Listen, if you're saved, the only way you can work for God is get in His Word and know His Word. Why are people afraid to confess the truth? Is the way so simple that they do not believe it? A oh, dear friend of mine who wasn't brought up in a Christian home but lived in a Christian community attended a church readily every day it was the time it was open made preparation for his future home his wife his two daughters became a Christians his youngest girl was taken seriously ill and her death was a great grief to him he then commenced reading the Bible whoa what's it gonna take for you to start reading the Bible what's it going to take for you to start reading the Bible, you who are Christians. If you're not reading the Bible, you better get on the ball. Your, your time is at hand. Later on, his beloved wife passed on. He now seemed to want to understand the Bible, and he read it through. He is reading it over again, and is trying to live a good life, but in his own strength. He is afraid to confess Jesus Christ before men. He says that it is a serious thing to do. And it is. But if he doesn't do it, he is not going to make it into heaven. He can live a good life. He can read the Bible through six times. He can live a good life. I got a man, a friend, that's read the Bible through. He said he reads it through every year for several years. And doesn't believe any of it. He says it's myths. And, and different things. Christ is our authority. Read his verdict. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 and 3. Christ Jesus tasted death for every man. But you must believe in Him and give yourself to Him and He will give you the gift of eternal life. I know this from experience and am glad to give you my testimony. <laughs> when a very young girl, I was deeply convicted of sin. Wanted to get saved. There seemed to be two kinds of sin. Something in my being which I did not understand the original sin, which Jesus Christ had, had atoned for, then the actual sin that I had committed, of words, th uh, thought, and deed, that I knew were wrong. Uh, these must be repented of and forgiven, or I could not live the Christian life, here and to go to heaven when I died. I was persuaded by a Christian friend to go out to a public service, confess my sins, and Jesus would save me. At a revival meeting, I went to the altar service for two nights, but did not have the assurance that my sins were forgiven. However, I joined the church on provision, attended a weekly meeting, heard the Christian testify that by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, they had received eternal life. They had the witness of the Spirit that they were saved. I longed for such a blessing and prayed earnestly for it, but sought it by trying to live a good life instead of faith in Jesus Christ. I really was trying to make myself good enough to receive it. My hoping and my longing to get saved never ceased, but I was several years finding out that by trying to be good, I could not merit salvation. My time's come and gone. But the end of that story is, is that lady birthed a young girl 
and that girl died. And when that girl died, she died saved. And she said, Mom, we're going to heaven. And she said goodbye and went to heaven. And a year or so later, that mother realized the only way to heaven was ask Jesus forgive you of your sin. It's not what, what you can do. It's what he did. Our time's come and gone. See you next time. Bye-bye. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word.